This government, if anything, is tilted towards the south and, and towards the east. Do you think this could lead to a split between East and West Ukraine? Professor Snyder. No, on the contrary. The one thing which could lead to a split, sorry, the one thing that could lead to a split between East and West Ukraine would be some kind of intervention from the outside. We have, um, we have good polling data taken over the course of the last 20 years from all regions of Ukraine. In no region of Ukraine do more than 4 percent of the population express a wish to leave the country. I'm pretty sure in most states in the United States, the percentage would be much higher than that. The normal response is about 1 percent. Ukraine is a diverse country, but diversity is supposed to be a good thing. It's a multinational state in which the, both this revolution and the people who oppose this revolution have various kinds of ethnic identifications, various kinds of political commitments. The person who started the, the, the demonstrations in November was a Muslim. The first people who came were university students from Kiev. The next people who came were Red Army veterans. When, when the regime started to kill people, the first person who was killed was an Armenian. The second person who was killed was a Belarusian. In the, the sniper massacre of Lex last week, which is what led to the change of power, which is what directly led to the change of power, um, uh, the, one of the people who was killed was a left-wing ecologist Russian speaker from, from, from Kharkiv, Yevhen Kotlyov. Another was a Pole. The people who took part in this protest represent the variety of the country. The people who oppose these protests also come from various parts of the country. This is an essentially political dispute. And I think the good news is that once Yanukovych was removed, violence ceased, and now we're on a political track in which um, power is no longer in the hands of an interior minister who is killing people and instead is within the chambers of parliament. Parliament has renewed the 2004 constitution, which makes the system a parliamentary system, and it's called for elections in May. In those elections, people from all over the country will be able to express themselves in a normal, post-revolutionary way. And then we'll see where things stand. And last week, uh, Democracy Now! spoke to Russia scholar Stephen Cohen, who said Ukraine is essentially two different countries. Ukraine is splitting apart down the middle because Ukraine is not one country, contrary to what the American media, which speaks about the Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Historically, ethnically, religiously, culturally, politically, economically, it's two countries. One half wants to stay close to Russia, the other wants to go west. We now have reliable reports that the anti-government forces in the streets and there's some very nasty people among them, are seizing weapons in Western Ukrainian military bases. So we have clearly the possibility of a civil war. That's Stephen Cohen. Nikolai Petro, would you agree? <clears throat> Professor Cohen is right that there are very serious differences between the regions, and they go deep uh, to the historical memory of not just what World War II was about, but what the end of the Russian Empire was about, what the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Poland, uh, the parts of Ukraine that were under it, were about. Professor Snyder is, however, also correct um, on the fact that much of the country does not want to dissolve. Uh, there is a commitment to being Ukrainian, and it would be indeed to everyone's advantage here if the country, if the parliament really did reach out to um, the segments of the population that are not, uh, that have been effectively disenfranchised by the last coup. And however, I would tend to disagree because the first steps within 24 hours that they've taken are exactly the opposite. Let me give you an example. The repeal of the law allowing Russian to be used locally, that's the main irritant in East-West relations within the Ukraine. The introduction of a resolution to outlaw the Communist Party of the Ukraine, which effectively is the only remaining opposition party in parliament. The consolidation of the powers of the Speaker of the Parliament and the acting president in a single individual, giving him greater powers than allowed under any Ukrainian constitution. Of course, the call for the arrest of the president. Now we have effectively a parliament that rules without any representation from the majority party. 
since most of the deputies of the East and the South of the country are afraid to set foot in Parliament. Meanwhile, all across the country, headquarters of parties are being sacked by their opponents. This is the stage which we have for the elections for May 25th. Will they be fair? There's no money, according to the, prime, uh, the acting president and speaker. Vigilante militias routinely attack and disperse public gatherings they disapprove of. News broadcasts yesterday, Inter was interrupted by forces claiming to speak for the people. What do you think?